Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hash Raptor YouTube channel. Hope you guys are doing great. Today we are going to be doing some hash rate testing on the NVIDIA RTX 3090 Founders Edition. Now I'm going to tell you how I got my hands on one of these, or at least access to one of these. Recently Best Buy did a big retail drop and a couple of my friends went out. We got there at about 4.15 in the morning, jumped in the line. Some more friends showed up and before you knew it we had gotten to know a bunch of people in the line. I actually got to meet a few people that were familiar with the channel and just had a really really great time talking with the community and getting to know people and just just having fun being there part of the event and fortunately for everyone that I got to meet at least everybody got a ticket now there were a fair amount of people towards the end of the line that did not and stuck around hoping to get something at least this time I can tell you where we were 4 15 a.m. we got a ticket now by the time the Best Buy reps came around to us we had a few selections a few options that were available and a 3070 and 3090 were one of them now the 3080 was my main goal the main thing that I wanted to get out of choosing those cards but they had already been taken up through about 75 to 80 people who got tickets in front of me so what was left was the 3090 and the 3070 I chose the 3070 and I'll do some testing on that I'm going to show that in a different video but today we're going to talk about the 3090 and the reason for that is because a couple of my friends did pick up the 3090 and they've got them up and running and they've offered for me to gain access and do some hash rate testing so I'm excited. I know this thing is a beast. I'm excited to see what it can do. So let's jump in and let's start playing with this thing, guys. Let's see how far we can take it, how efficient we can get it. And let's look at what the ROI is, what the cost is on this card today. Just as a side note, I wanted to show you this real quick in the event that you go to a Best Buy drop, a retail drop, and you're trying to pick up a GPU. <laughs> if they're all Founders Editions, what happens is they go around with folders, and as each folder gets emptied, then they strike that GPU off the list and let the crowd know what is still available. And you might be trying to do some calculations in your head on what's the hash rate and what's the right choice when it gets to me. And I was having a conversation in Discord with Tech Shinji, and this was the list that he had put together. And this is a, a really good idea if you want to use this as a cheat sheet as to what to mark off the list and what to get next if they ask you when you're in line. And the ones that you want at the bottom to call out right here is the 3070 Ti and the 3080 Ti. And the reason for that is those are the only two of the Founders Editions cards that have LHR, so the hash rate limiter. So really bang for the buck, potentially, let me know if you disagree with us because I really agree with this list almost completely, it is the 3080 is the first choice, the second is the 3060 Ti, followed by the 3070, 3090, and then the last two, 3070 Ti and 3080 Ti. The only uh, difference I made, the only choice difference I made was I flipped the 3070 to second spot here and I did that for two reasons. Uh, I already have a 3060 Ti Founders Edition and I wanted to test a 3070 but also uh, I think I might get better resale value down the line. You guys let me know if you disagree. A little bit better resale value out of the 3070 than I'm going to get with the 3060 Ti. And also, if I keep this thing and run it for years, the 3070 seems to do a little bit better on other algorithms than the 3060 Ti. But if you're looking at raw hash rate on Ethereum, then yeah, you could save yourself 100 bucks by going with the 3060 Ti. So just a little side note there. Okay guys, we are about to move over to the 3090 and on my way there I wanted to show you and give you a little tip in Hive OS just in case you want to do something like this. So you can see my farm right here that I'm doing some maintenance on today. I've got a little test farm set up over here and then I also have uh, access to my friend's farm. 
and he's again allowing us access to that 3090 but if you're in a situation like that where you've got some friends that uh, you know locally or maybe some people you just trust online really well and you need them to do some maintenance maybe they're keeping an eye on things while you're on vacation or just anything like that uh, it's real easy to give roles based access and let me just show you how to do that real quick. So what you want to do is jump into your farm and once inside a farm you will see a tab up here called access and if you tap on that it'll show you a list of who has access to the farm and what roles they play. This was for a test video I did with the Hive OS team right here. So this is a dummy account. And this is uh, my buddy who I was hanging out with at Best Buy who picked up the 3090. I gave him access as a tech to my farm so he can overclock, reboot, shut down, and upgrade rigs if anything were to happen to me or if he was helping out around here. And he's given me the same access. So that is how when I go back out to my global view here, I can see his farm right here. He just gave me access. I just gave him my username, so Hashraptor right here. He added access, picked what role he wanted to give me, and now I can get in there. And maybe I'll do a separate video on that in case we want to jump into Hive-related questions or issues. But let's go ahead and jump into his farm, and let's take a look at this 3090. So you can see he's got this 401k rig up right here. It's been up for over a day, just about two days, I guess. So when we jump inside the rig here, now this is the default settings that I've switched this card back to. And we're going to play around with the overclocks a little bit and see exactly how well we can do. Now currently in Hive OS, you can see we're at 346 watts. We have no overclocks whatsoever on here. And this 3090 is still a beast. It's at 107.3 mega hash and it is at 61 degrees Celsius. So we're going to try to see if we can improve upon all this. I know uh, that we can. Now, as I was starting out here, I did ask my buddy, since I don't have live access to the wattage of the rig, to take a shot of his kilowatt meter at the wall and shoot that over to me so I could show it to you. And here is what he just gave me. All right, so this is the photo that he sent over to me of his kilowatt, and you can see he's at 403 watts at the wall. All right, the first thing I want to do is Let's see if we bump up the memory a little bit. We know that we're going to get some feedback once we do that. Let's bring the power limit down to about 330 watts. And let's apply that. All right, so we've been up for almost five minutes here. And with these moderate setting changes here, we've stepped up to 110.4 mega ash, so just a little bit, and we are at 329 watts. So let's go ahead and see if we can do better than this. I know that we can, so let's get a little bit more aggressive here. So what I want to try is I'm going to bring the core clock to an absolute value. So let's go ahead and set this at 1100. And notice here in Hive it switched right over to absolute core clock. Last bit of aggressiveness we're going to go for here, 2250 on the memory clock. And on the power limit, let's drop this to 300 watts. Okay, there we are, 121.2, 121.2, 46 degrees Celsius, 85% on the fan, 288 watts. A little midstream tweak here. I usually don't do this, shame on me, but I'm going to try to eke out a couple more watts here. Let's go to 295 and see if we can hold this hash rate. Now one of the things you want to take a look out for when you're doing these overclocks is your accepted share ratio. This is really the most important thing and you can see that we are at 100% here and that this has been up, this miner has been up for over a day, almost two days now and uh, he is at 100% accepted shares. So as we're making changes here, particularly on the memory when it comes to Ethereum, if we do anything that's out of whack, we're going to start seeing rejected shares. So once I land on something that runs for five or 10 minutes and it's looking like it's probably the best setting, this is probably what I'm going to land on right here, then what we want to do is let this run for several hours or the better part of a day if we can and just take another look at the accepted share ratio. And it's not unreasonable to be under 100% if you're down at 99.5% or above. If the trade-off is good for the hash rate that you're getting in the wattage, anything at 99.5% above is, is pretty solid. All right, folks, we are back. It is the following day, and it is looking really, really solid. We have one rejected share 
but our accepted share ratio is 99.94%. So really solid there. And again, our settings that we landed on was a power limit of 295 watts uh, in the software, memory at 2250, core an absolute value of 1100, and we've got our fan set at 85%. Now the temperature for this looks really, really good at 46 degrees, but I can't monitor the memory temperature. And I've talked to several folks in the community, some, uh, some friends of mine as well, who have said that the memory on this runs pretty hot and they keep this fan upwards of 80 plus percent, some at 90 percent. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it up here even though our temperature is showing 46 degrees Celsius. And we finished up at 121.4 mega hash. Very, very impressive for this card. And I had my friend send over a picture that he snapped at the wall. So this is where we landed, 336 watts. So 295 here in Hive, then you add motherboard, risers, everything else, uh, comes out to 336 watts. Let's move over to what to mine and let's do a quick calculation and see what the ROI on this card looks like. Okay, so we've got 3090 selected. Let's change this to 121.4. We said 336 watts, so let's go ahead and change that. 336 and let's do a calculation okay there we go golly this thing is a beast eight dollars and 44 cents this is after electric before electric we're at nine dollars and 33 cents for those of you that don't have to pay off that electricity bill monthly if you can save that you are at nine dollars and 33 cents and if we look a little bit deeper here let's put our hardware cost in we're at fifteen hundred dollars on this GPU let's calculate that so right now the break even on a 3090 is hundred and eighty nine point six days so we'll call it hundred and ninety days at the moment for me personally anything under two hundred is what I'm looking for from an ROI standpoint and the fact that you get the added benefit of one card and you can densify I'm starting to really look at the 3090 in a different light all right, so that'll wrap this video up. Very impressive. Let me know if you've got any questions. Let me know if you've got any better overclock settings that you've used in the past. We'll see you in the next video, Raptors. Take care. Code